Hello. <laughs> Hi, this is Christina with the Stage Nature Center here to uh, do a virtual trail exploration with you all today. I see we have a couple people joined in. I'm going to give us just another minute here. Oh, I think I see some more people popping in. All right. Again, this is Christina with the Stage Nature Center here in Troy, Michigan. And I hope you all are doing well. I see that we have a few people who have joined us. And uh, hopefully you can uh, hear me and see me okay. Uh, today we are going to explore the trails virtually through some videos and photos that I've taken out here. But before we get started with that, I just wanted to give you some um, updates on our situation. So our building, our Nature Center building is still currently closed. It'll be closed uh, until after June 12th. So the reopening date right now is June 16th tentatively. Of course, that'll depend on um, how things how things go and um, what any other updates there are. Our trails are still open. I know it's a bit rainy today <laughs> and a bit over overcast uh, so it may not be the best day to come out on the trails but um, still could come out on the trails if you don't mind walking in the rain a little bit um, and uh, the trails are open dawn to dusk and you can still see uh, wildlife out here just we ask that if people are coming out on the trails to continue to um, to practice safe social distancing keep keep people six feet apart at least uh, be respectful of others. There should be in plenty of room on the trails. If you have to step off the trails a little bit to give people some space, you can definitely do that. Um, and uh, while we are close, I'm doing these Facebook Live programs. So if this is your first time joining us, I've been doing these since the end of March. And if you've missed any, you can go onto our website, stagenaturecenter.org, and see previous programs that we've done. I've done a variety of topics and um, this way we can still uh, connect with you guys and and uh, so you can uh, see what's going on here at the Stage Nature Center while we're closed. As a lot of you know, we're not able to do our public programs right now, our in-person programs. So, of course, as a, a nonprofit who relies on those programs for us to be able to fund what we do here, we don't have that funding coming in. So if you have it in your means today to be able to donate, please uh, feel free to do that. You can do that as part of this live post here. There should be a donate button. You can do it later on Facebook. You can also do it from our website, stagenaturecenter.org. Again, we, uh, we appreciate everyone who has supported us and donated. We really appreciate all the support. It helps us to continue to take care of our animals here and to help make sure that when we reopen, we can go back to doing things for you guys like programs and have the Nature Center open for you to, to explore and see all of these things that I've been sharing with you on video. So we, we appreciate your support if you're able to do that. So if you have questions, um, you uh, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'm going to try to monitor the comments on another device here, another computer that I have to the side. And um, that way I can try to ask questions while you all are with me. If you, if you're, uh, if I'm not able to answer your questions while you're on here, I will go back through after the presentation and make sure I got all the questions. And if I didn't, if I missed somebody, then I'll, I'll answer those questions after the presentation. Also, feel free to leave your comments. I'm going to glance at those periodically throughout the program and see what people are sharing. I see some, some people are saying hello. Um, so I'm glad to see you guys. I see a lot of familiar faces or names, should I say. Um, would love to see your faces. Can't wait to see your faces when we reopen. Uh, I also see that a few people have already donated. So thank you so much for that. We Again, we really appreciate that. So um, hopefully uh, technology is on my side today and I'm going to switch over to 
the presentation so you can see some of the videos and photos that I've put together for you. Uh, of course, if for some reason you stop hearing me or you can't see something, please put it in the comments so that way I know that I need to adjust something. Of course, as as, a, as in the past, if I lose connection or something freezes up, I will do my best to reconnect and come back on. So um, if, if for some reason you lose me or I lose you, just uh, check the Facebook page for us to reconnect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen over here. So in just a moment, you should see a picture of a butterfly. And um, this butterfly is one of the butterflies that we can see out on our trails here. So we, I did a virtual trail exploration a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago as one of our Facebook Live programs. And at that time, I did mostly the Sugar Loop is one of our trails that we have out here. I did a lot of video and photos from that part of our park, um, but there was still a lot that I didn't get to share with you guys. We have about 100 acres out here, two miles of trails. That does include our farm that um, is part of the city of Troy. And um, it's a great place to come out and explore wildlife, especially in a um, very suburban area where there's not a lot of places left like this. So there's there's really quite a lot to explore. So I couldn't, I could barely even touch all of the things I wanted to share with you in the last virtual trail exploration. So today we're gonna go out on some of our other trails together here in videos and photos. We're going to explore the Blackbird Loop, which connects to the Sugar Maple Loop. We're gonna explore parts of the Fox Trail, part of the Bluebird Trail, um, and parts of the Rouge River as well. So you'll get to see more of that today. So this butterfly that we see here, um, they blend in really well in the leaves. If, as I'm sure you can probably see here, sometimes you can just kind of see them flitting about. I just started seeing them a couple weeks ago, which was really exciting as uh, we change from or end of spring here to summer. And um, I'm going to, let's see here, play a video for you. Um, that I got of this butterfly. So this butterfly is called a morning cloak. Some, t I mean, you, some people might confuse it with the monarch because it does have an orangish color. It's quite a bit smaller than the monarch. Their wings also, it, this butterfly's wings, was they were a little tattered, but this type of butterfly, the morning cloak, they do have rough edges to their wings. So they do already look kind of jagged on the edges of their wings, but they really are a pretty little butterfly if you can catch them and see where they land and watch them for a little bit and see the, um, the, that pretty flash of orange that you can see here. All right, so this video is showing you the, um, the part where the sugar maple loop connects to our blackbird loop. And uh, like a loop, you can go one way or the other and it makes a full complete circle. Um, the, the blackbird loop has a lot of uh, has several different habitats that you can see along it. This video you can see a lot of the skunk cabbage. Um, this video was taken a couple weeks ago, so we actually have a lot more leaves on the trees now <laughs> than you can see in this video. We are still seeing the skunk cabbage out here, which if you haven't heard about the skunk cabbage before, it's a plant that has a really bad smell when you break the leaves or the stem, and that keeps animals from eating it, which is why the deer here. Uh, don't eat the skunk cabbage. There's a lot of plants they do eat, but skunk cabbage is not one of them. So you'll see a lot of skunk cabbage out here. So here's another video I took a little bit further down the trail. If you guys are coming out on the trails right now, um, this part of the trail is really wet. So this is a low area where water likes to collect. That's one reason why the skunk cabbage grows so well here. Um, and you know we see a different variety of plants. It's also a great area to see maybe underneath logs. There might be salamanders and things like that because it gets so wet. With the recent rains in this area, part of the trail has become very, very wet. Um, oh, you can see in the background here, there are some deer, the common site here again on the Sage Nature Center property. Um, it's, you have a good chance of seeing them if you come here. 
But uh, so again, with the current re recent rains that we've had, the trail has become quite muddy in some areas. We did some trail work a couple year, a weeks ago with just a few people, and we're going to do some more trail work in a couple days with just a few people, um, you know, wearing masks and, of course, practicing safe social, social distancing. So if you've been out here and you've seen that really muddy spot in the trail where it's hard to get through, um, we will be working on that in a few days to make it easier to pass through. Um, and of course, that's another thing that your your donations help support is to help us uh, maintain the trails. Uh, here's a video that I that I took. Um, and if you have your volume on, I suggest turning it up. I was actually just taking a video here of the trees, but in a few minutes you're going to hear a bird calling, and that catches my attention. But these trees that you see here um, are beech trees. And these trees, uh, one of the things that we end up seeing here, they have a very smooth bark. So a lot of people like to carve into them. Um, and that might seem like a fun thing to do, but we do ask that if you're out here, you don't carve into the trees. We, this is a nature preserve. So we try to keep it as natural as possible and try not to damage, damage the wildlife. So I don't know if you heard that. There it is. That sound that is in the trees, and then you can see the bird fly there. I'm going to let you listen for just a moment. All right, I'm going to play the next video for you here and let you watch that, and then I'll tell you more about it. While I'm doing this, I'm looking at some of the comments. Actually, I see somebody pointed out <laughs> that the butterfly. You're right. I said the wrong the the wrong um, the wrong butterfly. I had a video of the morning cloak. This is actually the the comma um, is what this this butterfly is called that you saw in the the video there. So I apologize for that. Thank you for somebody pointing it out. I think I was thinking of the other butterfly and, and said <laughs> said the wrong name. So I apologize for that. Sometimes sometimes I do that. <laughs> But along the lines of the morning cloak, uh, the reason I think I said that was I, right around the same time I was taking video of the comma, there were also some morning cloaks in that same area that you could see. Um, the morning cloaks are a darker butterfly, and they, they blend in really well, um, especially with the leaves. But um, so yes, again, the, the butterfly that we saw there was the, the comma, not the, the morning cloak. So I apologize for that. So this video that we saw, um, there, were, like you, you heard, you probably heard the birds calling. Um, this is a Cooper's hawk, and actually, I have not seen the nest, but there, there was reported that there was a Cooper's hawk nest. Um, and this, uh, you, you saw that there were two Cooper's hawks, and what you were hearing was them calling to each other. Cooper's hawks are pretty common hawks. They're a smaller hawk, and uh, one of the things that that they're known for is actually coming into bird feeders and uh, picking off birds in the bird feeders. So <laughs> um, it is part of the food chain and it's part of the, the circle of life. So uh, it could happen if you have some bird feeders. Um, it's actually kind of neat to get to see them to come into the bird feeders. But they're, like I said, they're a relatively common bird. Okay. 
So here is some more video of the of the blackbird loop. And what I'm going to do at sections through this is I'm going to speed it up a little bit so we can um, so you don't so we can see certain parts of it. But again, you can see a lot of the skunk cabbage here. Like I said, right now on the trail, this area before the boardwalk is really, really muddy because this is a really wet area. And again, that's why this skunk cabbage grows so well here. And th this is kind of a, a marshy, more marshy area that we have here along the boardwalk. One of the things that I like to look for along this area is because, uh, because of the mud, our footprints. The deer travel a lot through this area, so it's a great area to see footprints from deer, um, even raccoons. So I'm going to speed it up just a little bit here. This is, again, the boardwalk along the bluebird, or I'm sorry, the blackbird loop. A lot of skunk cabbage growing in this area. It's also a little bit more open, so we'll see some different uh, birds in this area. I've seen the, the yellow warbler hang out in this area, um, as well as the, um, I've seen, oh, the name is escaping me right now. This little box that you saw there on the post, I just wanna point that out. I know I've pointed it out in previous presentations, but um, that is a that is a uh, a bee house, and you'll see these along our trails. There are a box that have holes in them, and the bees can uh, live in these boxes. And these are for our native bees. So honey bees, while we while we it's important to support them, they are pollinators. Um, they're not our native bees, and those boxes are meant for native bees. Uh, in the video here that you can see, I'm showing you a footprint trail from the deer. So along this part of the video, you'll see that you're going to start to see more of the river. In the previous virtual trail exploration that I did, you could see part of the uh, first part of the river when you're walking around on the property uh, near the building. This is the uh, further back on the property off of the, the Blackbird Loop and the um, Fox Trail, where these two intersect. The Rouge River, we're near the, the headwaters of the Rouge River, and... Um, so we play an important role here because any pollutants that go into the water can travel downstream. So we, we do try to keep our waters here pretty clean and, um, and free of, of chemicals. There is the group, the Friends of the Rouge, who help to monitor the stream. We can see things in these areas. Like I like to look for tadpoles. I like to look for um, bugs that might be in the water. Um, fish, turtles. There is a bird that sometimes we see here along the river that you might he hear and see. It's one of my favorite birds. It's called a kingfisher. Um, I see somebody ask, can you show a contrast between the Cooper's Hawk and a red tail hawk? Um, I would love to show you a contrast, but I, I would have to go searching around on my computer to show you that, and I'm, I I'm afraid I'll lose you guys. And um, the way this is connected is it's using software. So unfortunately, I can't show you that right now. Um, but there, there is quite a big difference. Red-tailed hawk is quite a bit larger than a Cooper's Hawk. Um, and the red tail, when they're adults, they do have the reddish... Um, 
reddish coloration to their tail, whereas Cooper's hawks don't have that. So maybe after the post, if you want, I can try to find a few pictures to show comparison and post them up, or you can look online. But unfortunately, I can't switch back and forth and show you those pictures right now. Oh, somebody said, how many minutes does it take for this live video? <laughs> um, we will, I'll probably go for another maybe 20 minutes or so to show you some, um, some different things we have here along the trail. Okay. Um, so again, I'm going to speed up through some of these videos. I just wanted to show you some highlights. But here I'm going to continue down the boardwalk along the Blackbird Loop. I'm going to kind of speed it up here. It'll start to get a little bit drier because as we walk down the Blackbird Loop here, we are heading towards our meadow. This is a great area to see deer, um, especially during at, towards the beginning of the day and towards the end of the day. They'll move through this area as they go through the front of the property. And a lot of times you'll see them laying, if, you're, if you have a really good eye and you're paying attention, you'll see them kind of just laying in the, off the trail here in the, in the brush. I'm going to speed it up again a little bit here. Okay. So here we are coming up to where you can continue on the Blackbird Loop, or you can go to um, take the, the Bluebird Trail. So this is our meadow. Uh, for those of you that may have not heard before, that cage that you see there, it's called a deer exclosure. And that's to keep the deer from eating everything. We have a lot of deer here, like I mentioned before, and they eat a lot of wildflowers. Uh, we are trying to restore our meadow. So we've been doing a lot of work in the meadow to remove invasive species such as autumn olive. And one of the things that we need to do is to replant the meadow with some native species of wildflowers. So those deer exposures are going to come in handy as we replant them to help protect some of those wildflowers as we're trying to get them to regrow. So if you see some stumps in the meadow right now, um, or some piles, that's because of that's as a result of us trying to cut back the autumn olive that it was starting to take over the meadow. One of the great things you can see in the meadow is our bluebird houses, and we do monitor them during nesting season. For bluebirds, we have we typically have volunteers who help us with this. Although this year um, we're basically using staff and one volunteer due to the um, pandemic. As I'm sure you can see here, this is a turkey. <laughs> this is one of our male turkeys. I, well, I shouldn't say our. I should say one of the male turkeys that you can see here. And the reason I, I say that, and as I've mentioned in previous presentations, because these animals are not ours. They are wild. They can come and go as they as they please. Um, so they do go into the surrounding neighborhoods and they, they do spend a lot of time here, but they're not our turkeys. Even if sometimes they act like they're our turkeys because they've gotten so used to people, but they're not our turkeys. <laughs> so here's some more video of this turkey. If you watch the, the, the turkey presentation, you may remember that we know that that's a male because he's got the beard coming off his chest. So here's the bluebird houses. And some of our bluebird houses do have birds in them right now. Only a couple of them, only a few of them have bluebirds. But the one that I just showed you actually does currently have, or did have, a, or does have a bluebird nest in it. Let's see here. So the, the, the house to the right of this turkey does have a bluebird nest in it. So if you're lucky when you're out here, you may see a bluebird flying up to it or landing on top of the box. This video was taken a couple weeks ago, but right now in the meadow we do have some plants popping up that are really important. I'll point those plants out in just a minute in another video that I've taken. As you walk the trails, you'll see these signs. Uh, if, we, if they have numbers and they have a color, those match up with our trail maps and those help you to figure out where you are in the trail. Now on top of that, you'll see a sign like on this one, it says Bluebird Boxes, and it has a little QR code, a QR, that way you can read it and get more information about what you're seeing along the trails. And these were done by a um, Boy Scout. And we're going to be updating these soon because some of them are getting kind of old and faded, so we will be updating these soon. So here is the bird that I was just telling you about. Um, this is the, the Bluebird, and 
um, she was kind of hopping around in the tree, so I got to see her. And um, it's really neat to get to see them. Here's another picture. She flew over to the top of the box and she hung out there for a little bit. So this is that box that I was um, that we were referring to in the video. Sometimes you may see another bird that has a bluish coloration on it um, in the meadow, and it's not a bluebird. This is called a tree swallow. So they also will nest in these boxes, and actually qu there's quite a few of them nesting out there. And um, the parents can be pretty, um, pretty protective of their nests. So when we're monitoring the nests, we have to go up to the box. We open the box to look at the nest. And the tree swallows are not very fond of that. So they're, they're often known for um, dive bombing the, the people who are monitoring the boxes. But that's another bird that you might get a chance to see if you go out to the meadow, especially right now, because they are nesting in those boxes. So here's a video I just took the other day of the meadow. So you can see there's quite a bit more popping up now compared to just a few weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of grasses and plants popping up. And there is a, a small animal <laughs> in this video that caught my attention that I'm following along here. And you'll get to see what it is here in just a minute, a little bit closer. But it is a butterfly. And I was really excited when I got to see this butterfly just a couple days ago because this was the first that I've seen of this butterfly, of this species so far this spring. So I'll let it zoom in here and then I'll tell you what we're seeing. All right, so as you can see here, this is a, an orangish butterfly. It's not the comma that we saw earlier. This is a larger butterfly. This is the monarch. So I'm really excited that they're coming back again. I did do a Facebook Live post on monarch butterflies. So if you want to learn more about them, you can go onto our website and look back for that video. But uh, they are, they're, they're been, they've been in their migration back up north from the south, a lot of them coming from Mexico. And they did start seeing them up here in Michigan uh, you know, a week or so or go maybe a little bit more than that in some areas, but I had not seen any here yet. So I was really excited to see them flying around in our meadow. Um, they, there were also reports of them already laying eggs in our native garden, which is out front of the nature center. That little plant that the, this monarch had landed on is a very important plant to monarchs and that's the milkweed. And meadows like this are important because they support that kind of habitat with milkweed. And so that's one reason why we want to maintain our meadow and not let it be taken over by species of plants that aren't supposed to be there, like the autumn olive, that will make it hard for these kinds of plants to grow that support things like monarchs. Bluebirds like meadows like this too, so it's also important for things like bluebirds. So we're working really hard to try to get this meadow back to where we want it to be to support these different kinds of wildlife. So this here, I'm jumping to the Fox Trail. And this part of the Fox Trail I, I really like because there's a stand of pine trees. And these pine trees are native trees. These, these are our white pine trees. And so this is, we have a nice stand of white pine trees here. Um, this is, you'll see in another video that this comes right before an area that is very taken over by another invasive species called the buckthorn. And I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. So this tree is not a pine tree. I was showing you this tree because of the, the bark. And there's another example of the tags that you'll see along our trails. So the white pine tree has needles that grow in bundles. And in just a moment here, I'll show you a bundle of these needles off the tree but they grow in bundles. And this is one way you can identify a white pine tree is by looking at these bundles. So if you see in this picture here, I have a bundle in my hand and this bundle has five, 
five needles to it. So here we go. So in a white pine tree, each bundle of needles has five needles. And you can remember that because the word white has five letters in it. So that's one way to help remember how to identify a white pine tree. Okay, so another area that some people will stumble upon is our outdoor classroom. It's, uh, you'll just see here in just a minute that it's an area where we've got some benches set up that we can do outdoor programs. There's also a metal cabinet out there where we could store supplies. We don't store supplies out there currently, but it is a nice area that if you want to just kind of go walk back to and sit and listen to the birds. It's also a great area to listen for frogs calling, especially at this time of year. Um, this is pretty close to a wet area it's close to um, where you might we might hear a lot of frogs calling so it's a nice area to sit and listen for the for the frogs especially at this time of year and here's another video showing you the outdoor classroom a little bit closer here now technically the trail that goes beyond this <laughs> is not actually a trail um, People have turned it into a trail and people do go down there. And of course, here at the Stage Nature Center, we do ask people to stay on the trails. Um, so if you're coming up to the outdoor classroom, the, the, this spot is the end of the trail. You turn back around and you go back towards the, the Fox Trail. So this video that I'm going to show you here is further along the Fox Trail. And I really want you to pay attention to how different the trees look here. Um, a lot of this area has been taken over by buckthorn. And this area is really hard for us to do a lot with because, um, because the buckthorn trees are so are, are more mature and they're harder to they're harder to maintain. So if you've ever been out here before, we do work days. You can something you can do to volunteer, and one of the things we do is removal of buckthorn. And it's easiest to remove when they're younger and um, you can pull them from the ground if you're able to. As they get older, you have to do what we call a girdling the tree where you treat it with um, an herbicide to kill the tree. But this part of the fox trail, unfortunately, is very un overrun by buckthorn. And this is a good example of what it would look like um, if we were to let buckthorn take over the, the rest of the nature preserve. So we do, we do work pretty hard to try to keep these invasives out because when they grow in, they, they choke out native species that are trying to grow that support native wildlife. So if we let the invasive species that come from other places take over, then it, it messes up that balance in the ecosystem. So we're coming up to another boardwalk here on the Fox Trail. It's also an, a very wet area, <laughs> that's why we have the boardwalk. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit here. Again, there's a lot of buckthorn along this area. And a lot of this green stuff that's popping up here is young buckthorn. And here I'm going to show you a close-up of one of those. And this is a plant that grows around that could grow around your houses as well and you may notice that if you have it growing around your houses it's a battle to try to keep it out so that way it doesn't choke out other native plants that you're trying to grow. All right, I'm going to speed it up here for just a second. So this area that we're coming up to, oh there's another deer trail. <laughs> like I said it's very wet in this area so you can see a lot of deer footprints. Um, as we come up to this area, there's a split in the trail that goes up to our our marsh tower. And that's what we're going to see next here. I'm actually going to move on to that. Oh, I like I sh shared this picture because the deer here, you will see them moving around in this area, but it's so thick that a lot of times you won't you'll hear them moving around, but you won't see them and um, sometimes you'll just see their heads popping up with their ears out <laughs> if you're looking carefully. Right, 
So the bird that we're hearing in the background is the robin. A lot of you are probably familiar with that bird. I'm going to speed it up here so we can get to, here we go. So a lot of this green stuff, again, that you see popping up, just to show you how intense it is, a lot of this is buckthorn that's growing up in the area. And we do, every once in a while, do work days out here to try to remove that. But it's really hard with, with um, how much is growing in and, and only limited manpower to keep, keep it under control. So if you're ever looking for a volunteer opportunity, that's something great you can do to help us out here when we have our work days um, to help us remove these invasives. So here's our marsh tower. And I'm gonna show you a quick video that I took from the top of the marsh tower. So you can see the Rouge River running through this area. Um, I sometimes hear red-winged blackbirds in this area. Really, we're hearing a lot of the robin right now. Oh, there was the red-winged blackbird. I heard that. A very common bird that we see, not just here at the marsh tower, but all over the property, is this little bird. And this is, this is the chickadee. And one way you can remember it is that they, when they're making their calls, they sound like they're saying chickadee dee dee dee. So this is further down the fox trail leading toward, back towards the blackbird loop. I'm showing you this area because there you can see the bluebird houses out there. This is more of like a wet meadow type area. Um, and this area is great for a bird that you can see doing their courtship displays here in the spring. And that is the woodcock. Um, it's a bird that does migrate and then come April is usually the best time to see them. Normally we lead woodcock walks where we take people out to this area so they can see their courtship display, but we didn't get to do that this year because of the closure. But this is the area that we usually see them in and um, they have a really neat courtship display. I highly suggest that if you have a chance to go online and look up some video maybe of their courtship display. And they're kind of a funky looking bird too. One of my favorite birds. Here's to the right is some more buckthorn that we removed uh, because it, you know just to try to get it under control in this area. We're coming up to the the boardwalk that's leading back towards the blackbird loop, and this area has, as you'll see here in just a minute, has quite a few cattails. I wanted to mention that in this area, this was a an area where we had a lot of Phragmites, and we try to make sure that it's under control and that it's not popping back up. But years ago, we did um, a lot of Phragmites removal and treating that. Phragmites is a plant that grows in the same area as cattails, but it's the type of plant that you see a lot of, a lot along roadways where there are wet areas. They look like they have a feathery tail at the top. Um, it's really feathery compared to the cattail. And the cattail is a native species, so the Phragmites really chokes out these these kind of wet, um, these wet areas and makes it really hard for other plants to grow like cattails. So we've, we've been doing a pretty good job of, of keeping the Phragmites back inside our nature preserve, but there is a lot of it growing outside the nature preserve, so it, it can come back in and we, we try to monitor that. This is another great area to see and hear red-winged blackbirds. which that is not a red wing bus. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit. So this boardwalk comes up to another part of the Rouge River. And I'm gonna move it forward here a little bit. 
So here's another crossing of the Rouge River. And I wasn't able to get a good picture or video of it, but when I was out here, I did see a, a warbler called a palm warbler. We do get warblers coming through here during the springtime. Uh, warbler migration is a big deal for a lot of birders. And so that we do get some different species of warblers. And there was a little palm warbler that was uh, jumping around in the trees here um, when I was out here not too long ago. This is also another spot that we've had uh, where people have monitored the stream for its health. And then as you come to the end of this, we come up again to a, the other side of our meadow. So oh, there's the sign for the Rouge River. Fast forward again a little bit here. So here is the other side of our meadow. So we're on the opposite end of the pictures and video that I showed you earlier. And we are coming back to the Blackbird Loop. Here you'll see a big house. Um, that is a, a purple martin house. We haven't seen purple martins in it. But that's what that is. And the other house that's next to it, if you're out here walking along our meadow, it doesn't have holes in the front, but it has a space underneath at the bottom of it. Those, those are bat houses. And um, bat houses, a great place to put them is more out in the open where they can get a lot of sunlight. Here are these piles that you can see there. That's more of that autumn olive that we, that we cut down. And it provides great cover for animals that like to hang out towards the ground, especially bird species that like to hang out towards the ground, and eventually that will decompose. Okay. And then move us on. And then this is back on the pond. <laughs> um, one of my favorite animals to see here are the mallards. I know they're very common, but this was a male mallard that was on the pond. You can tell the male from the female because the male has the bright green head. And the female is more of a brownish color. Another type of duck that we could see here, we don't see as much, is the wood duck. And they have a lot of different beautiful colors. They look like they've been painted, in my opinion. We did have a Canada goose nest here and we did see their babies at first um, and then we didn't see them. I don't know if they moved them somewhere else. We do also have some predators out here uh, like coyotes. They're not really a concern for people but coyotes do eat smaller animals so Canada goslings they might be something that <laughs> unfortunately may be food for something like a coyote. All right I'm going to switch back over to the camera here. And make sure I'm still here. Okay. All right. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some more videos and photos along the trail. And uh, as we get into summer here, uh, there'll definitely be some different things that pop up, especially different things like wildlife babies. I did see the first groundhog baby the other day, or just yesterday, so I was really excited about that. There, the fawns from the deer should be popping up soon, so here pretty soon I'll be doing a live Facebook post about wildlife babies that you can see out here. If you do see them out here or you see an animal nesting, we ask that you give them space so that way they're not getting too stressed out and um, they don't you know, abandon their nest, for example. So we just ask that you give them space. You're welcome to, of course, observe them and take video, but um, do give them space and uh, just respect them. So I hope that you guys have a chance to come out on the trail soon. I'll be doing another live Facebook post this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m. And um, otherwise, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I hope to see you this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m. on our, for our next live Facebook post. So. I'll see you guys. Take care and stay healthy. Bye.